the Warren Commission was politically chosen. Two Democrats, two Republicans, one member of the Senate, one member of the House, etc. It was just a political operation, and they said it was well-balanced. It wasn't well-balanced, but that's a side point. It should not have been a political commission. It should have been a commission made up of investigators, people who knew what they were doing. They had the chief justice as the chairman. He attended almost no hearings. The major problem was that they never investigated the facts, and they never intended to. And what piqued my interest was that I, I lived in Washington, D.C., then right across the street from the Supreme Court, and a half a block away was the Veterans of Foreign Wars building, which is where Earl Warren and his commission held their hearings. So they were nearby, and I heard them. And when I knew they were coming out, we'd go over there with the press and listen to what they had to say. And the first question that was asked Earl Warren after the first hearing by a reporter is, when will we get the facts, Mr. Chief Justice, meaning the facts about who killed President Kennedy? And his answer was, you may never get the facts in your lifetime. The press never picked that up as anything alarming. It was very alarming to me. But now we know what it was, what he was talking about. The CIA had briefed the Warren Commission. They had told Earl Warren that Oswald was in Mexico City at the end of September and beginning of October 1963. He visited the Soviet embassy and he visited the Cuban embassy. He was in Mexico City because he wanted to go from Mexico City after he came back to America and killed the president. This is the Warren Commission view. Uh, so he went from Mexico City and his plan was to go back to Mexico City go to the Cuban embassy and get safe passage to the Soviet Union. That's why he visited the Cuban embassy and the Russian embassy. This was told to the Warren Commission, and the Warren Commission said, well, okay, we've looked into it. Russians and Cubans were not involved. But if these facts ever come out, the American people will believe that the Russians and the Cubans were involved, and that will be World War III. The only thing is Oswald was never even in Mexico City. And I can prove that nine different ways I did in last word. But this is the most important part now, is that David Attlee Phillips, who ran the CIA in the Western Hemisphere from Mexico City and who invented the story that Oswald had been in Mexico City, years later spoke at a conference at the University of Southern California. And I was there, and I heard him speak, and he said, when all the facts come out, you will see that Oswald was never in Mexico City. So the guy that started the story, the one that terrorized the Warren Commission into classifying everything, covering everything up, and now he's telling us the whole thing was made up. And that's crucial, because if Oswald was not in Mexico City, and the CIA had already established that, that he was there. And who was Oswald in September 63? Nobody ever heard about him. But the CIA left a trail in Mexico City of someone who was supposed to be Oswald, but Oswald was not there, left a trail in September of 1963 so that two months later, when Oswald was arrested for the murder of the president, they could show the... Mexico City connection, but the fact that Oswald was never there and the fact that the CIA had made up that story two months before the assassination tells us a great deal. It tells us that in September 1963, the CIA knew that two months later, the president was going to be assassinated in the United States. And more than that, this is crucial. From the time Oswald was arrested to the time he was killed, he was not allowed to talk to an attorney. And he said, you can see him on the videotapes of him walking back and forth, being led by the police and the Secret Service and the CIA surrounding him. But he, would said, he said, will some lawyer please come forward and give me some advice? Will some lawyer please come forward? I haven't been allowed to see counsel. Okay, I'm a lawyer. That was an invitation. And I went to the... Uh, the authorities in Dallas, and I said, I'd like to represent Mr. Oswald. He said, will a lawyer please come forward? I'm coming forward. But they wouldn't let me talk to him. They wouldn't let, not let anyone talk to Oswald except FBI agents. We don't know what was said there. But they would not allow any ordinary civilian, 
lawyer or non-lawyer to talk to Oswald. It was important that that he be killed before he told anybody anything. Remember, I've been a defense lawyer for 60 years now. And let me tell you, the most important piece of evidence, if you're a defense lawyer in a criminal case, is the defendant. He's your source. Now, he may lie to you, but even then, you have a chance to check it out. And very often, people say they're innocent when they're, in fact, guilty of something. And But, if, for example, if I had seen Oswald, if any competent lawyer had seen Oswald, Gerald Posner, who wrote the establishment book, the most recent one, in support of the commission, said, if Mark Lane had represented Lee Harvey Oswald, Oswald would have been acquitted. And he's right. Any lawyer could have done that because... What was absent in the charge against Oswald was any evidence that connected him to the assassination. No eyewitness. Nobody saw anything. Nobody did anything and uh, to indicate that Oswald was involved. He never confessed. He kept on insisting he was innocent. The government would not allow him to talk to an attorney because, as I said, the first thing I would do, if you were my client, I would say, where were you? And he would tell me where he was at the time. And if it involved other people or other circumstances, I would go check them all out. doesn't mean the client is telling you the truth. The client often does not. But you can at least check out what he has to say, and then if he's telling you something untrue and you know that, you go back and say, well, listen, I checked that out. That's not true. This witness said you weren't there, and then you have a chance to go on uh, with, with your inquiry and your investigation. So the crucial piece of evidence, a lot of evidence was destroyed by the government, but the crucial piece of evidence that was destroyed was Lee Harvey Oswald, because that's where every defense lawyer begins, talks to his client, sees what that view is. And this is crucially important that Oswald was not allowed to talk to anyone in the 48 hours that he lived, other than FBI agents who, of course, had a reason to not tell us what Oswald was saying. On occasion, he'd be leading through the news media, and he would say, will some lawyer please come forward and represent me? I'm innocent. I didn't do this. And he thought he had been arrested for killing police officer Tippett, because that's what they told him. And it's right on the videotape. They said, did you kill the president? He said, what? The president? They haven't even talked to me about that. They said, there's some police officer. So there he was in custody, questioned by the FBI. They weren't even asking about the Kennedy assassination. Didn't make any difference what he was going to say because no one would ever hear it. He was going to be dead within 48 hours, and he was shot to death in the Dallas police and courts building while being protected by the CIA, the FBI, the Secret Service, the Dallas police, the, the, the deputy sheriff's association. They were all there, and one guy walked up to him and killed him. And yet America uh, was supposed to be convinced that he did it, he did it alone, and we can be reassured. Well, and Oswald's history, of course, uh, joining the Marines at 17, um, can finish finishing basic, and then, and then studying Russian at the Monterey Language Institute um, so that he really became fluent in Russian. He certainly didn't learn that growing up. And then moving to the Soviet Union to defect, and then coming back, fully assisted by the U.S. government, coming back. And his wife, too, was not a citizen. Exactly. So... It's pretty clear that there was some uh, intelligence work going on with Oswell all along. Yeah, obviously they had picked Oswell out. I'm sure they had. I'm sure Oswell was not the only one in the files who they could blame the assassination on. I mean, what if he got hit by a truck? What would happen to this story? I'm sure there were several people around various places ready to be utilized and set up if it wasn't if Oswell everything happened to Oswell. Cool. If uh, they have to have backups, because if they're on a mission, they want to make sure that they accomplish it, and they finally did on November 22nd. 